Hello Chameleon Wranglers, welcome to today's vlog and you are about to see absolutely nothing that I had planned for you. Oh, we were going to be uh, cutting wood and building things in the backyard. We were going to be setting up this arboreal L enclosure and uh, suddenly my back tweaked. Yes, I've had a, uh, I had an earth, um, a, a car accident uh, many years ago. <laughs> decades ago. And uh, the result of that car accident was every year, my back just kind of tweaks randomly for no apparent reason. I'm just standing there and I am assaulted by this back tweak and it sticks with me, goes away in about two days. And so tomorrow I expect I will be a functional, fully functional with just a little bit of discomfort. But today I am not going to be crawling inside of enclosures or operating heavy machinery. And so today we're going to have a calm session here in the studio while I recover. And I figured, how about we make this opposite day? And so I'm going to give you the other side to the things that I usually say. For example, you know, lately I've been talking about small batch breeding and the, uh, the advantages of stopping while you're ahead and limiting the number of chameleons that you keep. Well, on today, opposite day, I'm going to go ahead and give you an argument why keeping four to six chameleons is actually better. And, and I, I got to be careful how I say this because I don't want to get myself in trouble. All of you who have one chameleon and are happy, stay that way. Okay. So, uh, but if you are interested in getting more chameleons and you're wondering where that line is as to where, how much is too much and how much is just perfect, I am going to say that I believe that that line is right around four to six chameleons. And so I'd actually secretly, without admitting it, encourage people to work up to about four chameleons if you really, really love this chameleon stuff. And the reason behind this is it's actually easier to take care of and maintain four chameleons than it is one. Now, there's always caveats to all of this, but uh, I'm speaking mainly as far as Food. When you have one chameleon, you're trying to figure out how do I get enough food for this chameleon? I want to get the variety, but usually to be able to do that, I have to order feeders in and the shipping on all of those feeders, it's, it's amazing. Sometimes the shipping costs more than the feeders. And when you take into account how much it costs to maintain a chameleon, there's the, uh, there's the bucket of what does feeders cost? And then there's the bucket of what does shipping cost? Now I know, some of you are lucky enough to be able to live near a pet store that offers a variety of feeders. Uh, some of you may be uh, adept at breeding your own feeders, and so it may not be a problem. But for the majority of people who have to uh, outsource or get the feeders from some source, it turns out getting food for four chameleons isn't a whole lot more expensive than the getting food for one chameleon. Uh, now, I, yes, one chameleon is cheaper, but four chameleons is not that much more expensive. And if you're getting all of this variety for just one chameleon, a lot of times you end up with waste. And that's just a function of how things are done right now. Now, I know there are some uh, companies that are offering these uh, variety packs. And so you get that variety that we're looking for, uh, but in small quantities. And so this is the perfect way to have one chameleon and not have to have a bunch of waste of a bunch of feeder insects that the chameleon doesn't eat. And so today, remember today is opposite day. Today is we're talking about uh, the other side of all of the advice that I have chosen. I've chosen this advice because this is the best way to go. But, you know, there's always these little uh, side conditions that you can think of to where maybe it's good to go another way as well. And in this case, I have to say, if I were to start all over at this point, just say, all right, you don't have any chameleons, start all over. I think that I would start over with six chameleons. And I think that would optimize my getting equipment, setting things up, and uh, maintaining them 
uh, through the feeders every week. So let's see, what, what else? What else do I say that goes against the grain? Um, screen cages, I keep saying that hybrid cages are the best in most cases for chameleons. And so as a nice exercise, let's say, Bill, why should I get a screen cage for my chameleon? Well, because this is opposite day, I will give you a very good answer for that. And the answer is not because it's cheaper. The answer is you should get a screen cage because you have more flexibility. Yes, if you have a screen cage, you are able to easily add on solid sides, take down solid sides. You are able to adjust the sides to accommodate whatever humidity levels you need. And if you live in one of those areas where the uh, seasons are drastic to where the winter is cold and dry and then the summer is uh, sticky wet, maybe you don't want to get a hybrid cage. Maybe a screen cage that has uh, walls that you can take down uh, for the summer, maybe that's it. During the winter, you put up the walls and you have your nice little humidifying chamber there. But then when the uh, very humid summer comes, you're able to take down those solid walls and have a screen cage. So that would be a valid argument as to why you would get a screen cage instead of a hybrid cage. And actually, this is important for us all to be able to do this. We can have the husbandry that we advise when we say this is the best husbandry, this is what I recommend to you. But it's important for us to understand that that one simplification, which is important because if you're talking to someone who's just starting off, they cannot handle all of the variations and all the possibilities. But you as the advisor or you as an intermediate chameleon keeper or an advanced chameleon keeper, you need to understand when do you use a screen cage, when do you use a hybrid cage. And I still say the hybrid cages are the best option for chameleon keepers, but I need to be able to understand how screen cages can be an advantage and when should they be used. And you'll notice I can argue both sides of the coin. I can argue about why hybrid cages should be the choice. I can argue about why screen cages should be the choice. And if you are able to argue both sides and understand the perspectives from both sides, that's when you start elevating yourself and you realize, okay, these pieces can fit together in this way and every situation they fit together in a different way but you have gotten to the point where you now can move those pieces around and of course when we talk about this uh, you realize that it's really not screen cage or hybrid cage it is understanding the tools they're just tools they're not dogma all right so what's another thing that i say I say that uh, beginners should all start with panther chameleons. And why do I say that? Well, panther chameleons are awesome. They have great colors, they have good personalities, and most of all, they have a network of breeders that are there to support you. And so you can be handheld by so many different people who have deep experience with panther chameleons. Sounds great. What is the opposite of that? Well, maybe opposite's not the right word, but let's go ahead and say, how about veiled chameleons? So let me tell you why all of you should have a veiled chameleon. I love veiled chameleons. I know they get a bad rap because they're so common, but if you take a look at a veiled chameleon, you know, take away the, the idea that they're all common. And let's go ahead and pretend that every chameleon species has the same level of rarity and they're all $1,000 each. Which one would be a good one based on the merits of the species? And I got to tell you, veiled chameleons come very high on that scale. Talk about the colors that they show, the patterns that they show, the, uh, the ornaments that they show, the size that they get, the personality that they show. And yes, they are 100% that personality. Whether it's defensive, shy, friendly, whatever they are, they are that personality. But they're also wicked smart. And I know we hear a lot of people talking about how my veiled hates me and won't let me get near it. But veiled chameleons also are the ones that are going to tame down the quickest. Veiled chameleon. I mean, when I go to my veiled chameleon, I'll have my feeder cup and he's gone beyond taking the food from my hand. I will come to I will open the cage. I will pick out a dubia from the feeder cup and I will hold it up to him and he will run on over, ignore me and the dubia and go stick his head straight into the feeder cup. Uh, that's 
that's what I've got going on with my Veiled Chameleon. So these guys are just full of character. We chameleon people are so lucky that the most common chameleons are some of the nicest chameleons. If everyone was in a lineup and they were the same rarity, the same cost, man, just look at the common ones that we have, the Panther Chameleon, the Veiled Chameleon, the Jackson's Chameleon. I mean, my goodness, that's an awesome handful of species to choose from. So I think we chameleon people are pretty lucky. And to conclude this, this one little section, should you get a veiled chameleon? Well, once again, uh, you, you, you shouldn't get one just because I say to get one. But you also shouldn't discount getting one because you think, oh, they're too common and, uh, and I won't get the street cred if I have a veiled chameleon. Don't worry about that. You're going to have a great time with a veiled chameleon. They are hardy. They are outgoing. They are full of personality. Uh, and, and sometimes that works against you. I agree. But And they're beautiful, beautiful chameleons. So I'm going to put my vote for veiled chameleons or some of the nicest chameleons. Go veiled. Now, off the top of my head, I can't think of any other opposite day stuff that I would give a an opposing viewpoint to that I think is very valid. But... Maybe we can think about the future a little bit. Let's think about 20 years in the future. Let's say that I decided that it was time to slow down these breeding projects, these uh, establishing a new species in captivity and all of this, uh, all this stuff that I'm doing that is exhilarating, but you know, it takes a lot of work to do this. And let's say I'm going to settle down and I'm going to settle down to those six chameleons. Six chameleons that I talked about were the perfect number for me. And so the question, which six chameleons would you pick? And for me to think about which six chameleons would I pick if I only had six chameleons? And that's an interesting question. And I'm going to and we're going to answer it here. I'm going to answer it. What would I pick? Seriously, what would I pick if I only had six chameleons? And so it, it, I wouldn't be doing any, any breeding. Let's assume I'm not going to be doing breeding. I'm not going to turn that six into 200. <laughs> that, that's not the spirit of the question. So if I were to have six chameleons, I would have a male yellow-crested Jackson's chameleon from Kenya. And that's because the first chameleon I had, was it 1980 or something like that, was a Jackson's chameleon from Kenya. And that would be a very cool way to remember where I started. It was all started from that Jackson's chameleon. And, uh, and they've, they've stayed my, some of them, and they have stayed my, they, and they have stayed among my top favorite of chameleons. Jackson's chameleons are so nice. They're mild mannered with the triceratops horns, live birth. Oh my goodness. Of course, I'm not breeding, so live birth doesn't come into it. And I tell you, it's going to be a tough decision as to whether I get a male or a female. Obviously, the males have the horns because this is going to be yellow crested, Triceratops, Jacksonii, Xanthalopus. But I got to tell you, the females are some of the friendliest chameleons. I know they're not all friendly, but if you told me that you had a chameleon that would get on your hand and would eat while it sat on your hand, I would guess that you had a female Jackson's chameleon. I don't know if I would get a male or a female. I'll have to wait and figure that one out. So that's one. The second one would be a blue panther chameleon. And this is because back in the 90s, that was the ultimate. There were some panther chameleons that came off of the island of Nosy Bay that could be bluish seafoam green, but some had this mutation where they didn't have yellow pigment. And so they were this rich sky blue. It was unreal. But that is a chapter of my past that I still love. And I'm still tempted to this day, every day, to get a blue, true blue, nosy bay panther chameleon. 
And really, I think they only exist in captivity at this point because uh, anything that was blue on Nosy Bay has been uh, caught and uh, sent over because they are highly desired. So uh, that mutation probably isn't in the wild, but you know, it's a mutation, so it'll happen again. But they're actually pretty easy to find in captivity. We've done a, we've loved the blue panther chameleon so much that uh, we've done a good job at making sure that they're around. So you can find them right now. And, and I can find them as well. But uh, I, right now, I've got other things I've got to do with my chameleon time. I would definitely have a male blue panther chameleon. My third choice would be an Parsons chameleon. I'm sure it's no surprise that I love Parsons chameleons. I mean, who doesn't? They are long-lived. They are calm. They are intelligent. Now, whether I'd get an orange-eyed or a yellow-lipped, not sure. But if the choice were given to me, I'd do an orange eye. And fourth would be a male Triosaurus daramensis. Now, I, I'm sure many of you haven't heard of daramensis because uh, it's from Tanzania and Tanzania hasn't come in for quite a while. But daramensis is a three-horned chameleon. And, and I know anybody sees three horns, they say, oh, Jackson's chameleon. Nah, there's six species that have three horns. It's a pretty common ornamentation in the chameleon world. But there's something special about daramensis. And they've got the long, skinny horns, and they've got a sail fin on their back. They've got the bright pink lips when they want to impress their females. And they get leopard spots all over their body when they're not happy. One of my greatest accomplishments that I'm most proud of in the chameleon world is when I was able to breed, reproduce, and hatch out Daramensis. The babies come out a robin's egg blue. They are so incredible. But unfortunately, this is something that only the breeders get to fully enjoy because the blue never comes out effectively on camera. I've never seen a picture that accurately describes the blue that you see. And they lose their blue. It, it just goes to green in about two weeks. And so the blue baby Daramensis is something that only the breeder gets to enjoy. And it, it was a wonderful experience. My first chameleon website was actually daramensis.com. It was dedicated to this species and it was actually live for a little while. I think at the end of the 90s, uh, you, we had daramensis.com. So I definitely need to have a daramensis, a male daramensis as number four in my six chameleons. Now five would have to be the shamrock chameleon, Kaluma O'Shaughnessyi. If we're assuming that this is in 15, 20 years, then let's assume by then I'm actually successful in establishing some small batch breeding protocols. I mean, I've started this this year and it'll probably be five years before we can do the first analysis on it. So it's a long-term project, but I'm doing it with the shamrock chameleon. And so I think it only appropriate that one of my six would be a shamrock chameleon to commemorate, remind me of what may be my most significant achievement in the chameleon world. If I am successful in establishing small batch breeding protocols in a way that gets people to work together and they are able to establish a species. And I'll tell you right now, if one of the results of me working with the small batch breeding and talking about it so much is in the end that groups of people doing small batch breeding are able to establish a species in captivity other than the panther veiled or other ones that are uh, financially justified, then that I would say would be a, my greatest contribution to the chameleon community. And so that happens. Shamrock chameleon is definitely going to be part of that. And so what would be the last one? Number six. I think number six would be an egg. It would be an egg that I had a friend send to me and not tell me what it is. Just tell me, does it need a diapause or not? And then I will hatch it out. And I don't want to know what it is. I want to hatch it out. I want to grow it up. And let's see how long it takes before I know what I have. And so my last, the sixth chameleon is going to be unknown. I think that would be the perfect way to fill my number six position with a little adventure. And so here's a question to you. If in 
20, 30, 40 years. You are now retiring from all of this chameleon stuff, all of this learning, and you want to just settle in, retire with your chameleons. You get four to six chameleons. What would you pick? And I would love to know what your choices would be and why. Why are those four to six meaningful to you? I think these things are a great way to get to know us as a chameleon community. And so my friends, I think it is time that we close off this vlog today. I'm gonna to go ahead and see if I can recover. I'll take some aspirin and uh, heat backs and all this kind of stuff and get some sleep and see if I can attack this tomorrow and do all the things that I wanted to do today as far as cutting wood and building stuff and building out this arboreal L, all of this enclosure stuff. I really wanted to do that today. so. I got to take care of myself so I can do it tomorrow. Now, I do want to say something very special is on Wednesday, February 14th, Valentine's Day. Yay. This is going to be the first episode of the DIY Chameleon Guys video podcast. And this is going to be a show with me and James Cross. And we're going to be talking about doing projects within the chameleon community. There's so many things that we DIY and MacGyver, and so that's what me and James are gonna be talking about. And the first episode is going to launch on this Wednesday, and it's going to launch right after the vlog, and I'm gonna have a short vlog. He's gotta leave at 5.30 to get to work, and so I want him to be able to be there for at least the beginning. Of course, you can watch it anytime after. I wanna thank you all very much for joining me for this daily vlog. It's a lot of fun, and it's really cool being able to make videos about things that are just small on my mind and don't need the production of having an official YouTube video. It's great hanging out with you every day. And for those of you who are interested in joining for a live session, this is Tuesday, and Tuesdays at 5 p.m. Pacific, I go live on YouTube and Instagram. And I'll either see you tonight on the live or tomorrow morning for the next vlog. Have a great day. I'll see you soon.